Hey. Hi. Uh, this is a great crowd. I know. Yeah. I get the knives. You better be yeah. careful. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't have good knife skills. Yeah. Okay. I'll teach you. I'll show you how to hold it. So first, let's talk about your start. Yeah. In, <laughs> in this whole paleo world. Yes. I know that you have a history that prompted you to explore this new way of cooking. So talk to me about it. Yeah, it's not a, a fad diet for me. <laughs> I know some people do go on it for that reason. Uh, I have been eating this way now for almost seven years. Um, when I was 22, I had just gotten married, graduated college, and I was diagnosed with an autoimmune condition. The symptoms came out of nowhere. We didn't have any precursors, it didn't run in my family. We had no idea what was going on. Um, and I saw a bunch of different doctors and ultimately, finally, was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which is similar to Crohn's disease, uh, and which is an autoimmune disease, and it's incurable. And it's essentially where your body is attacking itself for unnecessary reasons. Um, and so after years of being on really, really heavy medications that mm -hmm. were causing tons of side effects, I was on medical leave from my job. Um, I could barely make it up a flight of stairs most times. Um, I would lose 25 pounds in two weeks. Uh, my hair was falling out. It was, it was a pretty miserable mess. <laughs> I started researching online and started seeing that diet could really help. Um, I had asked every doctor I saw, you know, mm -hmm. just, I didn't study nutrition, but something in my brain was like, okay, this disease is in my colon. Is there something that I'm eating that's making it worse? Or is there something that I'm not eating that could be making it better? And I just kept hearing the same answer of no, it doesn't help it, doesn't cause it, can't cure it. Um, and so I, I found some chat boards online, honestly, that I had seen some people saying, you know, I was just searching. I was like, you know, autoimmune disease and diet. And I would see people saying, I've been in remission or I've been eating mm -hmm. this way and it's really helped my symptoms or I've been able to come off of medications. And so after, it was a couple years, it was hard for me to commit. I like my pasta. I grew up in an Italian family. Um, but after a couple years of kind of in and out of doing gluten-free and paleo and grain-free, I really committed. Uh, and I saw a naturopath and did kind of an elimination diet. Mm -hmm. Within... 24 hours, my symptoms improved 75%. Wow. Um, it was amazing. It was just like this night and day um, shift. And it took a good while to get my health back to where it should be and to wean off of medications and things like that. But um, it was a, a drastic improvement. I saw on your website, your before and after pictures are staggering. Yes. I mean, you <laughs> just, I can't, I mean, it's hard to articulate like just how sickly you look. Yeah. And I didn't the, share those right away because it's a, uh, it is scary and it's like nothing like mm -hmm. me. Uh, and I hardly even remember that time to be honest because you kind of block it out. Uh, but it really is, it is like night and day. It's like I was a different person. Um, but those pictures really help illustrate just how bad it is. And there's so many people, mm -hmm. there's over 50 million Americans that suffer from autoimmune disease. Um, so it's not a small number. It's not like I'm, you know, one of the few, uh, and, a, and a lot of them just don't know that diet could help. And, it, you know, it's not a fix-all for everything, but there surely are a lot of things that could be helped by eating a cleaner diet. Did you notice when you ate specific foods that your symptoms were, were lessened? Yeah, well, it was more when I ate certain things that made the symptoms worse okay, than anything. <laughs> um, I ended up finding the foods that were more of like the enemy um, and started just really tracking kind of what I was eating and how that was correlating to symptoms. And it was a process. It was a process. And it took a lot mentally to even, you know, want to get there. I was young and I was a newlywed. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot when you're, you know, feeling like you have to give up kind of everything that you knew <laughs> and, you know, be dealing with this lifelong disease. And I'm guessing that you started writing your cookbooks as a way to make eating fun again. It, exactly. Because yeah. it doesn't sound very fun to have to sit there <laughs> no. and hyperanalyze every single morsel that goes into your mouth. Yes. Yeah, I did. So I started blogging. My husband, I had just, um, we had just had our first son. Mm -hmm. And I had quit my job to be a stay-at-home mom. And I was making some of these recipes. And he's like, you should start a blog. And I actually remember looking at him and being like, what's a blog? <laughs> I don't know. So he set me up on WordPress. And I started blogging recipes. WordPress. Yep, yep. Um, and, you know, that's where it all started. And the first book, yeah, that's kind of where it came from. And it was just a way for not only me to get to enjoy the foods that I missed, um, but to be able to share those with other people that were on a similar journey or that were just looking to eat some healthier recipes, you know, here and there. And um, it just all kind of started taking off. And I actually started realizing that the way I was eating wasn't just helping people like me. It was, I mean, this whole 
huge amount of different mm. ailments that people were writing in about saying like, I'm using it for this and I'm using it for this and it's helping me with this. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is more than just me. This is this huge population of people that are eating this way. Um, and so, yeah, the books are, everybody always asks me where I'm inspired, you know, by my recipes. And typically it's like something I'm craving that I miss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I wrote two of them pregnant. So there's lots of like <laughs> pregnancy cravings weaved in there. And then, you know, just going out to dinner and seeing things on a menu that I'm like, oh, I really wish I could eat that. Um, and I'll get back into my test kitchen and try to recreate it um, in a way that, that I can eat it and that it won't hurt my body. And I think it's so cool because you're not a culinary expert, expert. I am not. You never went to culinary <laughs> school, but you no. trained yourself, which means that if you can do it, then anyone who's having these issues can at least start. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of the way I try. I mean, this book particularly is about holidays and celebratory mm -hmm. events, so some of the recipes might be a little bit more intricate, but there's also great weeknight meals throughout there as well. But I do try to write them in a way that, that a home cook could, because I didn't go to culinary school. I mean, I, I cooked with my mom and my grandma mm -hmm. and watched lots of you know TV shows of cooking, but I, I, did, I, I did a lot of trial and error to figure it out. Um, it's not as easy, especially in the baking department. You know, you can't just substitute things. We're gonna talk about some of the ingredients, but mm -hmm. it was a lot of trial and error. There were many nights in my early blogging days where I would start dinner saying like, I'm so sorry, <laughs> here you go. Enjoy. <laughs> and enjoy. I won't make it again, I promise. Um, but we're eating it because it was a lot of money. Uh, so yeah, it was, a, it was a process for me, but it's now, you know, it's uh, this is my third book and it's gotten a lot easier. Now it's like just a lifestyle and it's just the way I know how to cook now. If you were to put, all-purpose flour in front of me, I probably wouldn't know what to do with it, to be quite honest. <laughs> well, and also what I find so interesting are the comments on your website from all these, these a lot of parents mm -hmm. who write in saying, you know, my son has horrible eczema and I cut yes. out X, Y, and Z and it's gotten exponentially better. Yes. It's amazing, it's amazing. The kids, I have two kids, so the passion behind that, I mean, I can't even imagine. I have people writing in who have six-year-olds who have Crohn's disease, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that is a debilitating disease that, I mean, and it is like what I had. I cannot imagine a child dealing with. And so if they're able to give them good recipes and let their kids still enjoy a chocolate chip cookie, but eating in a way that doesn't hurt mm -hmm. their body, that makes me so happy. And there's also actually a really big community of families who have children with autism and Asperger's that eat grain-free and dairy-free too, which has been incredible for me. You know, I'm, I started out just blogging, but the fact that I'm able to like, touch lives and really help people find health just through my recipes has been amazing and more than I could have ever asked. So for. I wanted to ask you, my friend that I mentioned to you backstage that has celiac disease, yes. I mean, she for real, when you go out to dinner with her, she yes. makes them go through the entire menu with her because she's like, this is very serious. I really can't have it, et cetera, right. et cetera. Right. And a lot of these waiters roll their eyes because <laughs> they're used to, you know, the yes. fat diet of the week and yeah. the elimination of the week. Right. Does that drive you crazy when people just hop onto these things and they kind of minimize it for those who really have an issue? Yeah, in a way, but to be honest with you, I hear from so many people that come to it for any reason. Maybe they're looking to lose a little bit of weight or maybe they just you know, think that it's healthier. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I hear from people that they feel better after they do it. So I don't really care what way they come to it. I mean, yeah, it is, it is upsetting when your you know, real symptom is minimized, but it, it's, it's, I think it's just only raising awareness for it, and I think that's nice. Um, and again, I think if somebody comes to it because it's a fad, but maybe they had this underlying health condition that they just didn't even know was mm -hmm. associated, and they get well, then great. You know, I don't then care why if, not? yeah, why not? I don't care if they came to it because it was trendy or they came to it you know, seeking something. I think that's great. And I think it's an overall, honestly, I think it's just a, a better way to eat and a healthier way to eat anyways, even if you don't do it 100% of the time. So I think it's fine. I mean, I, I do feel bad for the people who have like the really serious yeah. allergies, but I think you seek out places. You know, we just ate at a restaurant down the road and I just said that I had a gluten intolerance and the manager came over and was like, we take allergies really seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, my ticket said gluten-free. I was like, that's really cool. So I think they're stepping up. I can understand as a waiter. I mean, I served tables in college and I can definitely understand all the substitutions and stuff might get really annoying. But when I go out, I try to be really gracious about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, you know, don't put this, you know, I try to just tell them, Hey, I need to substitute. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think if you do it nicely, then it's helpful. <laughs> well, so let's start. Yeah. Let's walk through the substitutions. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I just wanted to show you a few of the things because some okay. of the ingredients are 
a little bit unheard of, and mm -hmm. it's nice to kind of show that it's really nothing scary. Um, so I'm going to bring this out first. So this is I one, love of that my, thing. one of my favorite tools. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, I mean, it's used in the vegetarian and vegan mm -hmm. communities, even if you just want to lighten up a little bit on the pasta. Like I said, I'm Italian, so one of the things that I missed was pasta. Mm -hmm. and, and Yes, it is not like eating regular old pasta, but it sure does the trick because I feel like most of the time, the reason why we eat pasta is to eat the sauce, right? Like that, at least for me. So if I can have the sauce all piled up on some veggies and serve that to my kids, which they eat these, like they love them, they slurp them up. And I have a one and a six year old, so they are in their picky stages. Uh, but I'm like, well, that's even healthier. And so it's, it's kind of saved it for me. So it's called a spiralizer or okay. a spiral slicer. Um, and so we just, I just cut off, zucchini is probably the one that people do the most. Uh, but honestly, you can spiralize anything. So I have, I'm going to just even these ends out, but I have uh, sweet potato noodles in the book. I have butternut squash noodles. That's amazing. You can make, I have this Thai salad that I love that's like beets and zucchini mm -hmm. and cucumber, and it has this like almond Thai dressing on it. So you can kind of do whatever you want, but you just put it on this thing and it runs these really great noodles for you, which I think is so fun. Um, and my, of course, my kids like it too. So, you know, I mean, there's spaghetti squash, which I feel like most people have heard of. Um, but this one, I think, is just more fun. It just kind of creates these, like, really long zucchini noodles. Yes. Which, you know, I mean, even as an adult, it's like you want to slurp something up. Um, but if you don't have one of these, the other thing that we do a lot of is uh, a julienne slicer. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this thing runs you, like, 25 bucks. It's a big piece of plastic. But I've had mine for years, and it still lasts. But this guy is, like, under 10. And you can, I'll show you with this one, actually. You can kind of do the same thing. But so, it's not as fun. No, it's not nearly as fun, and they're not as long. <laughs> but, I mean, it is. So you, like, again, I'm not a trained chef, so I don't do, you know, julienne mm -hmm. slice things very well. They're always, like, not uniform pieces. <laughs> um, but this is a good tool for it if you mm -hmm. want to. You can use it with carrots. And, you know, so, and then otherwise, sometimes we make... Um, kind of like a wider noodle with this as well. So I do a pad seyu recipe, like mm -hmm. a Thai pad seyu. And instead of the rice noodles, I do carrots. And I kind of, you just, you just peel them and you kind of just get, you know, something like, a, kind of like another noodle. So we, we do a lot of veggie swaps. So it's fun Oh my though. God, like this is totally appealing to the five-year-old in me. I want one of these so bad right, right now. It's like, like a I just toy. want to go home and spiralize Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. No, I mean, when I first got one, I was like, this changed my life. Like it was like this whole new thing for me that I could actually eat, you know, somewhat of a noodle. Um, so some of the other ingredients I use, mm -hmm. we talked a little bit about baking. Um, it is kind of one of my passions to recreate some of those things with my kids. So especially in this book, mm -hmm. you know, I have like a gingerbread house and hot cocoa with marshmallows. You and have a chocolate you, cake. Chocolate cake, layer cakes for birthdays, things that you would not normally think as paleo or grain free. Uh, but the flours and things that I use the most, I use a lot of almond flour mm -hmm. um, as a substitute for kind of whole, you know, whole wheat flour. Uh, and it's great. It's, it adds protein, which is a nice plus. Um, and it's, you kind of get this really finely ground almond flour. It's so funny. You can kind of put flour after anything that is finely ground at this point. You know, there's chickpea flour and there's coconut flour, which is this one here. Uh, essentially, coconut flour is just dehydrated coconut meat that they pulverize into a flour. Does it taste any different? It, uh, does it taste different than flour or than coconut? <laughs> Uh, than flour. Yeah, it has a little different of a taste, definitely. I mean, if almond flour, you're getting a little bit of a nutty taste. Mm -hmm. And then coconut, it's not sweet. You'd think that it would be, but it's really not. Uh, mostly the biggest difference is texture. Without gluten and yeast reacting to each other, like especially in breads and, and baked mm -hmm. goods, you're not getting that, you know, fully rised, like really stretchy dough. But my biggest thing, the biggest preconceived notion about gluten-free typically is that it tastes like cardboard, which unfortunately a lot of the products that are out there do. Uh, and so I really aim to try to get that mm -hmm. texture and flavor as close as I can to the original. So this is coconut flour. And then another thing that I like to use a lot of is gelatin, um, which sounds kind of weird, but you can get it from like a grass-fed cow mm -hmm. source, or you can even get fish gelatin. But I use it as a binder so you can make like puddings and things where you would normally maybe use cornstarch or a roux of some sort. This is a good binder. I actually made gummy bears one time. Yes scratch using the, the isn't it fun the animal like, wow. gelatin. Yeah. yeah so i have gummy worms in there for halloween <laughs> because my son likes dirt cups you know so it's like the chocolate mm -hmm. pudding and the homemade gummy worms and it's fun to see it mm -hmm. come together like that there's also a panna cotta in there that's salted caramel and chocolate panna Ooh, cotta it's so delicious and it's dairy free so it uses um, cashew and or coconut milk 
So that's a good one too. And it uses some gelatin too. And actually gelatin right now, if you know bone broth is like the big craze, that's because of the gelatin in there. So as somebody who has a gut issue, which actually a lot of people end up having kind of inflamed guts, gelatin can actually help heal the gut. So, oh. and for women, it gives you healthy nails and healthy hair. So who knew? I mean, <laughs> it's a win-win. <laughs> Why not? And yeah. Gummy bears. <laughs> um, and then the other thing I like to use is ghee. So most people know ghee from Indian cooking, mm -hmm. um, but because it's, clarified, it takes out most of the fat solids, so um, the milk solids, excuse me. So it's 99.9% .9 casein and lactose free, which most people who have dairy intolerances, that's because they can't process those proteins. So this gives you like the buttery flavor, but it doesn't cause some of the stomach mm -hmm. issues that some people have. So I love cooking with this. And it also has a high smoke point. So it's a really good thing to be able to saute with, but you can use olive oil, you can use coconut oil, but this is like one of my favorite fats. So just some of my ingredients just to kind of give you genius. an idea. I'm gonna try this. Yeah, you kind of push inwards as you're cranking. Oh, this yeah. is so cool. So I'm gonna <laughs> order one on Amazon. And it is sharp. I just always say, I'm like, make sure these little guys are pushed down well. They are, you're good, but. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. It's it's just a fun thing. I mean, I don't know. You know, you just okay. No, I feel sure. you. I totally feel you. you. Yeah, and good. I do like a nice little like like ragu sauce on yes. top of it. Yep, exactly. So the one thing I like to do with these, if you've ever tried those substitutes for uh, lasagna, I don't know if you've ever tried a zucchini lasagna. But you're usually left with this big pool of water at the beginning yes. or at the end. Yes. Because zucchini holds a lot of moisture in it, uh, and so after I make the noodles, I put them on a tray with just some paper towel and a little bit of salt. And I put them in an oven really low, like 200 degrees, mm -hmm. and it almost ends up kind of sweating them out. And Ooh, so, that's a really good idea. Yeah, and then you kind of push a little bit of the water out, and then you've got a better texture, and you're not left with that like super watery sauce at the bottom. Yeah, it's I one of those things that I've them. learned along the way. <laughs> Hard tired of learned of when trying watery to feed children. Ragus. Yes, exactly. And I'm sure our audience has questions, so yeah, hit let's us. Take some. Hi, Danielle. Hi. Thank you for being here. Uh, and when the weather gets cooler, what do you like to bake? Oh, what do I like to bake or make just in general? Oh, gosh. I'm, a, I'm like every food blogger. We're all obsessed with pumpkin. I don't know what it is. It's just impossible <laughs> to get around. So I love pumpkin bread and pumpkin muffins. We make a lot of those. Um, I, my sons love these chocolate zucchini muffins um, that are nut-free, so they're safe to send to school, which is hard these days. Yeah. But I do, those are probably the biggest things I bake. I always look forward to pumpkin pie, too. Um, and then I have a, a loaf of bread that is made in a blender, and we make a lot of that during the, during the winter, so we can make like hearty, warming things like bread pudding and French toast and stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't like to feel deprived during the winter. I was about you know? to say, like, it doesn't sound like anyone in your household is deprived. No, we are not. That's the thing. You know, I was so young. I was like, I don't want to be eating chicken and steamed broccoli mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. And so I'm going to create everything I can to keep those textures and flavors and colors alive. Yeah. Next question, please. Hey, Danielle. Love the spectacle that's going on over there. This is great. So I got to keep it real with you. I'm good at a lot of things. Good at being entertaining, talking to people, awesome. Opening a can, of, like, I can't even do that. A jar, <laughs> out of my league. So, I have a girlfriend, excellent cook. I know I gotta step it up. Yeah. What advice would you give for someone that has absolutely zero skill in the kitchen? Get really good at doing the dishes. <laughs> I started on that. Because that's what I do. My husband does not like to cook. He's back there. And I'm okay with that. I'm like, you know what? It's okay if you don't like to cook. Although he did help me make the fudge from this book last night. Um, and, but I hate doing dishes. He loves, not loves it, but he's fine doing the dishes. Um, <laughs> no, you know what? My second book, because it's called Meals Made Simple. It's a good starting point. I would say try a crock pot because it'll actually make you look really great, um, even though you're just throwing everything in and setting the button and leaving for the entire day. Um, that's a good one. Those are good things to start with. There's some crock pot recipes in there too, but I think that's good. Get started with something simple. You know, look for some things. I have a rib recipe in here that's super easy. You can put them in the oven and they just bake on really low, 250 degrees for like three to four hours, and you will look really great to your girlfriend if you pull those out. So, yeah. Next question, please. Hello. Hi. I wanted to know what was the worst diet craze that you ever heard of? The worst that I've ever heard of or tried? <laughs> Both. <laughs> um, I haven't, oh goodness, there's been so many. Um, I don't know. I used to do slim fast back in high school and I was eating and drinking shakes that were full of sugar and cornstarch and high fructose corn syrup. So oh, that, that must have done wonders for your yeah, body. Yeah, that was yeah. great. <laughs> might have been a precursor to what happened, but uh, that might be one of them. I think um, the thing that I learned was this one is very sustainable for me. It's not about 
losing a ton of weight really quickly. It's about really getting to your healthiest version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's so important is doing it to, for me, it's a lifestyle. It's something that I'm gonna be doing forever. But yeah, the, the yo-yo ones that promise really, really quick results, I think are usually The cayenne not a pepper good diet, right? Yes, oh my gosh, the lemonade, was that? Yeah, like it was lemonade drink? with cayenne yes. pepper. Yeah. You're like, what? That one. <laughs> and yeah. your book is out now? Yes, it came out yesterday. Congratulations, and where Thank can we get you. it? Everywhere, so um, BJ's, Costco, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, Target, it can be pretty much anywhere. And I'm touring all over the United States, 22 different stops. So I started here in Tribeca last night and heading on to Boston tonight. Um, and then from there, I am going on. So you can find that on my events page on my website if you're Thank in any of those cities. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.